Thank you for the kind invitation to speak at the retirement coffee house last Saturday at Pingree. And my apologies for missing the opportunity to join in that amazing conversation. But I humbly submit this brief video to rectify that gap. And dear Elsa, thank you for so many lessons in your classes at Pingree, but particularly thank you for instilling in me a love of rigor and the joy that comes from creating, reading, and analyzing text, which I have also done in a social policy research context. In particular, in my dissertation research on lived experience with brain injury for a PhD in social policy, which resulted in this book, Brain Injury Survivors, Narratives of Rehabilitation and Healing. And it's really about what is it like to live with a brain injury. I gave people cameras to reflect on their lives and document their lives, and they spoke with me about their photos. And I used narrative analysis methods to analyze their visuals and text. So I'm going to read just a, a few excerpts from this book to illustrate this type of narrative research. One important aspect is context and putting yourself in the moment of that interview experience. So I'll read a description of interviewing one of the participants of this study. He asked to call himself Subject D. Subject D is in his late 50s and good-looking in a mature, virile way with thick hair and a thick mustache. His voice hints at a lifelong habit of smoking cigarettes. He was injured falling down his basement stairs as he descended to fix the water heater. He was in a coma for a month. He participated in this study about a year after his injury. We spoke in his kitchen, sitting across the table from each other. He smoked cigarettes while we talked. Listening to the audio tape, I hear the flicker of his lighter, the silence of his inhalation, and my dry cough as I inhale the secondhand smoke. He offered me a glass of water. We sat near an open window which let in the sound of gulls, songbirds, carpenters working nearby, and a heavy summer rain that interrupted our conversation when he went out to close the windows of his wife's car, which he had been detailing when I arrived. Another aspect of this research is a poetic type of analysis of the interview text, in which I structured the text into basically a poem, each line ending when the interviewer paused uh, as he spoke, about his photo and grouping the lines into stanzas and giving each stanza a title using uh, his own words. The photo in question in this first excerpt from his visual illness narrative with four photos and what he said about them uh, is of his kitchen sink with many sort of cans tossed this way and that in the kitchen sink, a very luminous photograph. It's the first photo that we spoke about. Cans in the sink, the disorder that I'm living with right now. It was supposed to make a point. I keep getting confused and lost. Now everything is disorganized. I feel like I'm living in chaos and it's hopeless. These are appropriate pictures. This idea of dialogue, our own dialogue with the images, with the text, with each other, echoes very much your style of teaching, which I so enjoyed at Pingree. In using more than one approach to analyzing visual and narrative data, we as researchers and policymakers become part of the dialogue as we ask questions, respond to stories, analyze narrative, and suggest implications and avenues for future research. 
I suggest that the methods used in this study appear effective for eliciting emotions and feelings about lived experience with brain injury. They appear to be effective for engaging the emotions and feelings of viewers as well as participants. These and other illness accounts bear witness to suffering in ways that have implications for those who are well in addition to those who are ill. I believe that these narrative types of research are very important and bring a different type of voice to social policy research. I suggest that brain injury survivors and other persons living with chronic conditions benefit from the use of these methods, and I suggest that all of us benefit as well. So thank you very much, Elsa, for your wonderful teaching, for inspiring me to use these types of research methods in social policy. I wish you the best of luck in your retirement and the opportunity to focus deeply on your own writing. And uh, thank you very much for your attention just now to this video.